you have already learned how to mount equipment and check it out well ahead of the first snowstorm. In this video, you will learn the regular equipment checks that you need to make each time you leave the shop to plow snow, as well as the equipment checks and cleanup required after a storm. This video also covers proper radio procedures and protocol, along with ideas on the best clothing to wear when you are out plowing snow. Most shops are now equipped with weather information units. If time permits before you head out to plow snow, take a few minutes to see how large the storm system is and which direction the storm is tracking. It is also a good idea to be aware of wind speeds, wind direction, and pavement temperatures. In another video, you will learn in detail how to operate the weather information unit and interpret the information available from the Roadway Weather Information System or ARWIS for short. Before heading out of the shop, always do a quick general inspection of your truck. It is a good idea to do these checks in the same order every time, making them a routine so that you never overlook any items. Start with air pressure in the tires, tightness of lug nuts, and if the weather is extremely cold, it is a good idea to pour an additive into the truck's fuel tank if it hasn't already been added to the fuel. Next, check all blades. Look for any cracks and make sure there are at least two inches of blade beyond the moldboard. Check fluid levels, engine oil, engine coolant, and window washer fluid. Look into the toolbox and make sure you have an extra supply of shear bolts for both the plow and wing. They can break often, so don't get caught without extra bolts. Always check and make sure there are no loose objects laying on the seat or on the cab floor. Everything in the cab, including thermos bottles and lunch pails, should be secured to prevent them from moving around. Loose objects can become deadly flying missiles in a quick stop or accident. Also, make certain your truck has a full tank of fuel. Adequate material should also be loaded onto the truck. With a little experience, you will soon learn how much material is needed to treat the section of road to which you are assigned. Once a storm is over and the roads are open and clear, get the equipment cleaned up as soon as possible so you are ready for the next snowfall. After you have emptied any material left on your truck and put it back in the stockpile, Wash the truck, making sure to get all of the salt thoroughly washed off, as well as sand and dirt. Again, check all blades, plow, wing, and ice blade, making certain there is at least two inches of blade extending beyond the moldboard. Also, check skid shoes for excessive wear if you have them on your wing. Look over all equipment and check for cracks in welds or any missing parts. Point out any problems to your shop mechanic. And, as you do every time before you head out of the shop, do another walk around of the truck, checking tires, lights, and wipers so repairs can be completed and you will be prepared for the next run without delays. Your two-way radio can be your most important tool out on the road, especially in case of emergencies. Whenever you get ready to leave the shop, First, check to make sure the radio is on and working. You can do that by turning it on and watching for the display or power light to come on. Or call the shop to make sure you can communicate. Also, make sure that you are on the proper frequency. There should be a chart in your truck listing frequencies. The tower frequency transmits your call to the tower and it is then repeated from the tower. When you use the talk around frequency, you communicate directly with other Iowa DOT vehicles in your area. Radio range is limited in talk around or mobile operation and is normally used only when vehicles are in close proximity. There is radio protocol that you must be aware of and follow at all times. First, do not transmit when someone else is talking on your frequency. Exchange information efficiently and effectively. In other words, Think about what you want to say before you get on the air. Then, keep your conversation as short as possible. 
When making calls, sign on properly by addressing the station you are calling, using the shop name and number. Then identify your station by shop name and number. Speak slowly and clearly. Use proper language, and that means no profanity. You never know who may be listening in on your conversation. When receiving calls, acknowledge calls as quickly as possible by identifying your station. Use 10 code if you know it. And if you don't, it is a good idea to at least be familiar with the common codes used. 104 means I received your transmission and understand what you said. 109 means I didn't hear you or understand your message. Please repeat. 1020 is code for what is your location. Finally, when your conversation is complete, sign off properly by identifying your shop name, your number, and then say off. Selecting your snow plowing wardrobe may seem like a trivial issue. And it may be until you get caught out that first time in a howling snowstorm with equipment problems. It is then the clothing you are wearing becomes a vital issue. It has been said that when selecting clothing to wear, plan for the normal, but be prepared for the unusual. Experienced operators will tell you that you usually face the unusual when plowing snow. Start every shift with clean, dry skin and carefully chosen clean clothing. Cotton t-shirts and underwear are your best choice next to your skin. Over that, wear two-piece style long underwear, either thermal material or wool. On your feet, wear cotton or polypropylene socks as the first layer. Polypropylene is the best choice because it wicks moisture away from your skin. Cotton tends to hold moisture. A good choice for a second layer is wool socks. Do not wear stretch socks because they tend to cut off blood circulation, and it's good circulation that keeps your feet warm. As for trousers, jeans are a good choice. Suspenders are better than a belt because they allow for more air circulation. When you pick out shirts, think in terms of layers because loose-fitting layers of clothing trap air to help keep you warm. Over your undershirt, a heavy flannel shirt is a good choice. Pick out shirts with long tails so they don't work up and leave bare skin exposed when you get in and out of the truck. A heavy sweatshirt, with or without hood, makes a good third layer. Final protection over your shirts and pants depends on severity of the weather. Overalls with a coat or ruggedly constructed coveralls are good selections. Snowmobile outfits provide good protection, but are generally not made of heavy enough material to stand up to the rigors of the job. Always try to select clothing that is loose-fitting, since this traps air between layers of clothing and helps keep you warm. Steel-toed footwear must be worn at all times. Rubber bottom, leather top boots with liners are probably best. Oiled leather boots with non-skid soles and liners are good too. Buckle type rubber boots do a good job of keeping your shoes dry, but they don't breathe, which can cause your feet to sweat. Then, when you get out of the truck, your feet get cold very rapidly. A hard hat liner or knit wool cap under a snug-fitting hood is good protection for your head. Also, have a ski mask to put on, just in case you have to get out of the truck in a severe storm. Cold, dry winds can freeze your face in a matter of minutes. Polypropylene masks, called gator masks, are a good choice. Mittens are generally better insulators than gloves, but limit the use of your fingers. So, it's a good idea to carry both with you. A pair of gloves and a pair of mittens. Both can be used depending on what you are doing. Cotton thermal liners add even more protection for your hands. When selecting and buying clothing for being out on the road, remember that maximum protection with a minimum of layers is always best. Your equipment is ready. It's mounted and you've checked it out thoroughly. You're almost ready. You've learned how to operate your radio and what to wear. In the next video, Snow Plowing Techniques, you will learn how to plow, wing, and ice blade using techniques that veteran Iowa DOT snowplow operators have developed and successfully used over the years.